Baruch here with Gen Connect, and we're joined today by Anna Devere Smith. Anna, what is the role of performance in really tackling very difficult issues like race? Well, I mean, I think what uh, performance does is move from uh, not just minds but hearts. And so I think that's the most valuable thing that it does, whether that is, uh, say, the importance of Alvin, Ailey, uh, Alvin Ailey's extraordinary ballet, Revelations, which is probably the only performance I've ever heard of that's been endowed, that he started uh, performing first in the 60s during the Civil Rights Movement, and it's had a huge influence on Americans and people around the world to understand about uh, the history of African Americans in this country and some of the struggle, or whether it is all the extraordinary mu music that accompanied the Civil Rights Movement. I mean, you know, Aretha Franklin's Think is not just about um, a love a relationship, it's about a society. Uh, uh, as Bonnie Raitt once told me, you know, the blues are essentially a social uh, progress sort of genre. You know, when, when, when people sing the blues, don't do me this way, don't do me like that. It's not just about love, it's also about a society. It's not about just individual love. And then certainly, you know, uh, we can think of great movies and great um, uh, plays that have caused us to think differently about the way that we are, whether it's about war, whether it's about women, whether it's about, uh, you know, where would the gay movement have been, where would saving lives with AIDS have been without Tony Kushner's extraordinary play, Angels in America. Um, and so here we reenacted a conversation between uh, Mike Wallace and Lorraine Hansberry that happened in 1959 on the occasion of the opening of Raising the Sun on, the Bro on Broadway, which is a classic, American classic. We keep returning to it. It's back on Broadway again, having won many Tonys, including Best Director. So I think we look for performance to do more than policy can do and to do more than what politics is, which is, you know, a, fo a political football, which is about power. It's not necessarily about truth or even necessarily about what's the best for humankind. I don't think that the aspiration should be um, colorblindness. I think that is, you know, if that happens, fabulous. But the, the, the any type of suggestion that we are colorblind now or that we're going to be in the near future, I think is disingenuous. And it really takes us away from what the real work needs to be, which is to provide economic opportunity for people who are suffering and who are living uh, lives of struggle, trauma, and violence. And that's what we need to focus on, not some crazy idea about race blindness. Because by the way, in those communities, you know, they even, you know, uh, among themselves don't like different colors. Um, so I just think it's a silly enterprise, quite frankly. It's not going to happen. What we need to do is take care of people, save lives, and save communities. And so really those issues of poverty, of, of equality throughout life, really transcend the issue of race. I think, I, think, I think that, you know, I certainly have, you know, many students and friends who are of color who live lives of love and possibility. But the fact is that there are many black and brown people in our country who are not uh, able to get through school, uh, who uh, end up incarcerated, uh, and as early as preschool, they're in trouble. And this is, we have to look at this very carefully, or uh, one of the things that came up after our presentation at Spotlight Health is, for example, um, uh, uh, one of the one of the panelists worked for the AMA and pointed out that right now in the United States of America, three and a half percent of all doctors are black. Guess what? Guess what the statistics were in 1910? Three and a half percent of all doctors wow. were black. And the American Medical Association recently made a formal apology, a formal public apology to African Americans for the ways that they were denied health care and for the ways that black doctors were treated. So, I mean, these are real things that need to be addressed. And, you know, we might be able to make our way around to colorblindness, but to me, that's not the point. The point is how are people living? Right. Anna, thank you so much. All right. And for more with Anna DeVere Smith, be sure to check out Gen Connect.